I absolutely am addicted to that, that fulfillment or that happiness that people give me when they're happy post-operatively. <laughs> Hey, Dr. Bill Dorfman here, and I have my good friend and eye doctor, Will Christensen. I'll tell you a little bit about Will. Um, Will Christensen is a diplomat of the American Board of Ophthalmology. Uh, he basically is doing cataract and refractive surgery now, and he'll explain that to you uh, in a minute when we ask him. Um, he's a medical director and a leading ophthalmologist in Los Angeles County. He runs the Vanguard Eye Institute, a top facility for cataract treatment and LASIK surgery. After completing his res residency in ophthalmology at Yale New Haven Hospital, he earned a fellowship in cataract and refractive surgery, um, rounding out his extensive education. Since becoming an ophthalmologist, Dr. Christensen has performed 2,500 surgeries a year, which is about 12 times what an average ophthalmologist does, and um, has been a real leader in his field. And you've been practicing how many years now, Will? Boy, I blush even saying this, but it's already been 10 years, which is crazy, because I still think of myself as a 18-year-old kid, you know, going to cake parties on the weekend. So I don't know how that happened, but apparently, yes, I've been in practice for 10 years. Uh, actually, a number of years ago, I remember I was going to one of our academy meetings, and there's this thing where you get to sign up as a young physician, and the cost to, you know, to go to the academy meeting is much cheaper, and I tried signing up for it, and I'm like, no, you can't do that anymore. Anymore? <laughs> yeah, so apparently I'm old. What year did I meet you? We met in 2007. Wow. I so, so like 10, 10 years, years ago. ago. Okay, yeah. so I met you right I was when doing you met my up. fellowship. All right, so I have a question. How did you pick ophthalmology? And I'll tell you why I'm laughing. Um, I just filmed a segment on the doctors the other day, and I was sitting in the room, they put you in the green room, and the guy there was a proctologist. And I'm thinking like, people often ask me like, why'd you become a dentist? And I'm thinking, were you sick the day they assigned <laughs> specialties? Like, how did you end up in proctology? Because I don't understand how you would do that, but know. let's not do that. Why ophthalmology? You know, it's weird. I was a, I think I was a sophomore in high school, and one of my best friends, his father was um, a heart surgeon. This is in Billings, Montana. And uh, we were having a heart-to-heart -heart one night. He's the one that introduced me to medicine, and I think he had a, an exceptionally tough day at work. He'd work about 100 to 110 hours a week. Wow. And he had an exceptionally tough day, and he's sitting there unwinding, and, and we're chatting, and chatting about my future. And he's like, you know, well, if I could have done it all over again, I would have been an eye surgeon because you get to do surgery and you get to have a life. And I just, for whatever reason, I just latched onto that concept like a pit bull and saw it through. Yeah, and you know what? For people out there, students that are interested in, in medicine, some of them may not really understand how you actually end up in a specialty. Yeah. Maybe you can kind of give a quick little review of, you know, basically, you know, four years of medical school, internship, residency. Give them an idea of, of how and when you actually pick what field you want to go into. It's an interesting process. So you do, you know, you do your four years of, of undergrad, and then I actually took a little time off, and it's a very popular thing to do now um, before you start med school. So I took a couple, almost two years off. I did some research. I worked for a biotech firm. I did some research on cancer. Um, and then you get into medical school. <clears throat> and I think we all go into medicine for very altruistic reasons, for the right reasons. We want to help people. Um, nothing is more rewarding than helping people. And then you get into medical school and <clears throat> you know your first two years you're just studying and, and lectures and taking tests and that's about it. And then you start getting into your uh, clinical uh, clerkships and you get to start experiencing the day-to-day, -day, the actual lifestyle. It's about that third year in med school where kids, you know, by that time you're, you're in your mid to late 20s and you might get married, you might have children yourself, but you start coming to the realization of, you know, I was this very uh, motivated kid and, and I got to this point and now maybe I want to have a life outside of medicine. And so you start thinking and you start getting to touch and feel and experience that lifestyle. And so then there's a lot of times a big rush 
away from maybe pediatrics or internal medicine or these primary care fields where we desperately need people. And there's a big rush to these subspecialties, dermatology, ophthalmology, um, uh, radiology is another very popular one, where you get to really have a nice, nice lifestyle. With eye surgery, I always, because people, I get this question a lot about, well, what's it like to do eye surgery? And I, eyes are, are just peculiar. You know, I, I used to be in practice with this neurosurgeon, a brain surgeon. He couldn't watch me do eye surgery. It just made him squeamish. And I was like, how is that? You operate on brains. All right. like, I don't know. Something about the eyes just freaked me out. So yeah. it's a very common thing. With eyes, it's I often compare it to driving, you know, like driving a Ferrari 200 miles an hour down, you know, a little road. You, you know, it's fun, it's rewarding. You make one little wrong movement and it can have devastating consequences. So for Absolutely. us, it's blindness. Or right. Loss of the eye. Right, right, you know, right. Those are, those are big deals. And the space in which we operate is so meticulous and small. Yeah. You have well, to be on it, point. it's like the saying they say, you know, you, you practice medicine, but you do ophthalmology perfectly. That's a lot of pressure to work under on yeah. a day to day yeah. basis. And it's, and it's weird when you view it um, outside the box. I think that we, throughout our training, sort of like a conditioned athlete, you know, I couldn't go and run a marathon right now. Um, but if I trained for it, I could. And, and so I think we get trained in the process of how to cope with stress, how to take very stressful situations and just sort of put them down here and still, and, and use that stress to function at your highest ability. One of the things that we like to do in this Meet the Mentor thing is to give students a little bit of a window into your life as an ophthalmologist. So maybe you can kind of give us like a typical Will Christensen doctor day. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, you know, it's, it's interesting. So um, I'll, talk, I'll tell you about my typical day. So like my, today. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really spoiled in a lot of regards. I mean, let's just talk about my professional day. Uh, there's not very many doctors that, uh, you know, I get to roll into work at 8.30. I start seeing patients at 8.30. It's very rare that I'm still at work at 5 p.m. Now, these are conscious decisions I've made. I'm, I'm divorced, and so, and I have my kids 50% of the time. And so, I make these conscious decisions. It's always been important to me to, to sort of equalize my work life with my with my home life and, and so family is very important to me so I consciously make sure I'm out of there at five but so I, I'm spoiled that my day is uh, basically 8 30 to 5 I get in I get about 45 to 60 minutes for lunch um, lunch um, um, but so what is my day I typically wake up at 5 45 I'm down in the kitchen I'm making breakfast and lunch for the kids and, and I take them to school and I walk them up to school, I do a little morning flag line with them, and that's how I start my day. Roll into work. Uh, now what I do during those hours can be pretty chaotic. So my morning uh, clinic is from 8.30 to 12.30, and it's complete utter chaos. Um, you know, I don't even have time to go to the bathroom. Then at 12.30 we well, should be- Well, just hold on. They don't know what a morning clinic means. So this well, that's is where just you're- seeing patients. Right, you're yeah. seeing new patients, you're seeing follow-up so, patients. So post-operative patients, surgical consults, um, diseases of the eye and, and what have you. Um, and typically in your morning clinic, you're seeing how many people? Typically about anywhere from 20 to 25. Yeah, and now think about this. You're seeing a patient, you know, talking with the patient, exchanging pleasantries, then you're writing all your notes, you know, and then staying on time so you see the next patient. Because as a doctor, you don't want to keep your patients waiting because that makes them really upset and not want to A, stay in the practice and B, refer new patients, which you're always trying to do is get new patients in the practice. Yeah. So that's your morning. So that's my morning. And then 12.30 to 1, you know, I say lunch because um, yes, I have time to eat lunch, but it's during that hour that I then take that doctor slash surgeon hat on and I put on my CEO hat because I own my own practice now. So now, now I'm running a business. Now I'm running, you know, this multi-million dollar business and I, there's a lot of decisions to be made and inevitably something comes up. And so now I'm trying to handle all these issues during that, during that hour. And then uh, at 1.30, I start up with patients again or... The fun thing about ophthalmology is every day is a little different. So some days I might have clinic all day and I'm just seeing patients in consultation all day. 
Uh, but many days of the week, you know, it's a half day of seeing patients and then I'm off to surgery. And sometimes I'm off doing surgery inside the eye, like cataract surgery and uh, pterygium surgeries where, where, where I'm taking growths off the eye and replacing it with amniotic membrane that we get from placentas, which is actually really cool. Um, in other days, it's a totally different surgery where I'm doing LASIK surgery and helping young people with um, their vision so they don't have to wear glasses and contact lenses. So every day is a little bit different and that keeps it really fun and exciting. And are, are you, when you're doing surgery, are you mainly doing that in the morning or sometimes, is, is it like mix or sometimes in the afternoon? Well, you know, it's, it, it's funny, I, I'd say I'm a fine-tuned machine now. I know that I am an afternoon surgery, surgeon. So. You know, our, the surgery I do, when I do cataract surgery, for example, I operate with both feet and both hands at the same time while looking at a microscope and operating underwater. Um, there used to be this funny saying in Montana where it's, where it's like, well, it's not that hard. It's not like it's underwater basket weaving. This is underwater surgery. So, right. um, so yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's uh, quite involved when you're doing that type of surgery um, and using all extremities and looking in a microscope and, and, and what have you. And that's why I say there's really no room for error. And it's you just, prefer to do that in the afternoon? Well, because it's such meticulous work and because, you know, we're talking about one millimeter movements, and, uh, you know, if you make a one millimeter movement in the wrong direction, that can have very devastating consequences. So, you know, I have a cup of coffee in the morning. If I have a cup of coffee and then I go to surgery, it actually induces a little tremor that I can't have. So I've got it down to a fine science where I operate in the afternoon because I have one cup of coffee in the morning. By, by 11 a.m., that's worn off and I'm ready to go. Um, I've, I've tried it all different ways, but that's where I'm at. I'm an afternoon surgeon. All right. You got to know yourself, right? <laughs> all right. And in conclusion, what's next for Will? You know, I don't know. I do a lot of um, I do a lot of lecturing and consulting with industry in my field, and and that's afforded a whole lot of other pathways of, of research and innovation. I think that's really my next pathway. Is um, uh, I spend a lot of time looking at inventing the ideal lens implant when I do cataract surgery on patients. So it'll be something along the lines of innovation and research. That's really where a lot of my interests lie now. Awesome. Thank you so much. So again, LEAP is going to be July 22nd to the 28th. Um, hopefully you'll be able to join us again as a mentor. Will's been there in the past. And with that, over and out from Dr. Bill.